Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the uninitiated. This is a non-edited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes and I tried so hard to get something to happen. I even went on vacation, you know, usually when I go on vacation, a trade will happen or something important Coyotes related would happen. You know, I'll be caught, I'll be caught with my pants down, have to make a video. But not this time, um, very light on the news. Still the coaching hunt continues. But just this past Sunday, just a report squeaked in. They didn't get too much recognition by, you know, the NHL media or just other fan bases and other hockey fans. But Coyotes fans saw the news and were like, hmm, you know, at least I was. I, I got a report on this. I got to talk about him. So let's talk about Oliver Ekman Larson. It was reported this weekend that the Coyotes and Oliver Ekman Larson are going to test the market. Uh, it's not going to be like last off season where Ekman Larson was very adamant that he wanted to, wanted to stay in Arizona and only gave Bill Armstrong and um, Alex Morello just the choices of Vancouver or Boston. Now both parties are coming to the table to you know survey the whole market, all 31 other teams, don't forget Seattle. So that's where we're at. Um, you know, both parties are kind of unhappy with how things are going on. It's a hefty cap hit. Uh, Oliver Eckman Larson is owed a lot in salary. We'll get into that. But it's good that both parties are finally at the table. They're going to both test it, find the best place for Ekman Larson. You know, the counties aren't, don't have their hands tied like last off season where they only have two choices in the Canucks and the Bruins. So it's good. It's mutual. It's amicable. Um, if that's a word, I'm sure it is. So let's just jump right into it. The fall of Oliver Ekman Larson. Back to back. 20 goal seasons. This is when the Coyotes were actually tanking to get a high draft pick, but Ekman Larson managed to score back to back 20 goal seasons 23 goals, 21 goals, uh, 43 points in 2014 2015. A career high, it looks like, in 2015 2016 with 21 goals, 34 assists, 55 points in 75 games played. This is where, like, lightning strikes twice for Oliver Ekman Larson. It was unheard of for a defenseman to score back to back 20 goals seasons. He was only making five and a half million dollars at the time. It just looked like, you know, maybe Oliver Ekman Larson is going to be a stud. Uh, he's going to score a lot of goals all the time, consistently. And then it kind of died down a little bit in 2016, 2017, only mustering 12 goals. Still pretty good in assists, 27 assists for 39 points in 79 games. A bit low on the point totals. Um, you know, us Coyotes fans were a bit wary around this point. Like, oh, you know, was that just a flash in a pan couple of seasons? Is all of Reckon Larson really, you know, not that 20 goal consistent point getting D man, but he picked it up. I, I would say he picked it up in uh, 2017 to 2019. Back to back 14 goal seasons, 28 assists, 38 assists, half a point per game, getting 42 points and 44 points. Honestly, for me at this point, I was like, this is all of Reckman Larson. He's going to get over 10 goals a season, he's going to be half a point per game. He's going to drive our offense. He's our first paired defenseman. Um, this was around the time where he was becoming a free agent. And I'm sure we all wanted all of Reckman Larson signed. And it was a point John Chayka wanted to make. John Chayka. I like Chayka. It was a point around this time John Chayka needed to start building a core. He needed players to be signed long-term in Arizona. He needed players to want to stay and play for the Coyotes. And you know, Oliver Morrison went through a lot. His mother passed the previous year in this contract, year of 2018. So, you know, John Chayka decided to give him the captaincy and decided to give him a big contract 
eight years, $8.25 million. That's a 50% salary increase from five and a half million dollars per year, which all of Rankin Larson was making in these previous years. So he gets the big contract and the captaincy in 2018. Like I said, he had a pretty good season, 14 goals, 30 assists, 44 points. And then uh, he takes a huge step back in 2019, 2020, even with the Coyotes getting Taylor Hall, uh, nine goals, 21 assists, 30 points in 66 games below that half point per game mark. Um, still around this time, it was, you know, COVID happened. It was a shortened season. It was this off season, this murky off season between 2020 and 2021, where the reports came out that the Coyotes wanted to trade Oliver Ekman Larson and OAL only gave them the choices of Vancouver and Boston. Uh, I made a video about it. I wasn't ready to part ways with the Ekman Larson. It was one bad season. Um, it, it was, you know, a bit alarming, but not alarming enough for me to like jump ship immediately. I, I, and honestly, all that doubt of me not wanting to part ways with Ekman Larson um, was due to the fact that our back end really didn't look ready to make the jump. And then the 2021 season happened and Jacob Chikrin is the Coyotes' number one D-man. He's fit to be a captain, um, hopefully sometime soon, whether with an Ekman Larson trade or with the new coaching staff, they give the seat to Chikrin or Ekman Larson himself just says, hey, my heart's not really into this team anymore. Uh, Jacob, you look like a stud, a, a good leader, a passionate guy to lead this team. So I'll hand it off to you. I think that would be the most, that would be the good outcomes that come out of this. But uh, 20, the 2021 shortened season that just finished, three goals, 21 points, 24, sorry, 21 assists, 24 points in 46 games played, almost at that half per game mark, but the goal totals were not there. Um, if you're looking, if you're staring at this, these, you know, stats right here, I got the stats. Um, you would think, you know, 1.5 points per 60 minutes you know, Ekman Larson's actually doing better than previous years, but Ekman Larson's time on ice was severely reduced in 2021. Honestly, he lost two minutes on average per game. Um, usually he would play 25 minutes. He would average 24, 25 minutes per game throughout the whole season. And then in 2021, he was just hitting 22, I think 22 minutes, 22 and a half minutes per game. So obviously a huge reduction in time on ice, which is, you know, less time on ice, which is why this number is a bit inflated, getting 1.5 points per 60 minutes, which is his highest since that marvelous season in 2015, 2016. But I wouldn't look too into that because he's shooting less, as you can see. Um, he was shooting about seven shots per 60 minutes on ice and then just dwindled down to four and a half to about six. And now he's in the low five shots uh, per 60 minutes that he's on the ice. Usually Ekman Larson, he'll play 60 minutes in about three games. So, you know, five shots every three games, maybe, maybe a bit too low. I like that seven number. Um, all this shows is that uh, I believe Ekman Larson has lost his offensive touch. He's great defensively still. I would give him, I give him all respect. He he's a great defenseman. He's good with his stick. He is starting to make questionable mistakes lately. The past two seasons, especially, I think the fan base has been hard on him. He's paired with Jason Demers, and that pairing kind of, you know, makes a lot of mental errors in their defensive end. I don't know whether that's all due to Jason Demers or both of them. But I think he's still good defensively. Obviously, not eight million dollar eight million dollar worth of defense. But his offense is is gone. I think the Coyotes fans and me myself, we need to realize this. It's an unconventional, unconventional truth, unfortunate truth. To be honest, um, he's had time to get back to where he was. I think getting 10 goals in a season for Ekman Larson is probably his ceiling. Before his ceiling was 20 goals a season, 
So it just seems like he's not worth the $8.25 million cap hit. And on top of that, he's owed $10.5 million for the next three seasons because his contract is more front-loaded than back-loaded. So I would assume that Alex Morello kind of wants that contract away from his books. You know, $10.5 million is hard to swallow, especially after right after COVID. And for a player whose offense is just, it's not there anymore. And even the captaincy, you know, if his offensive, if his offensive talent died, but he was still a good leader, still a great captain, I could be sold on why the Cowboys should still keep him. But this past season, I saw nothing out of Ekman Larson. They had a five point lead in the last playoff spot in the West Division. And they, they just threw it away. And I feel like everyone responsible um, should be on the hot seat. And we saw Rick Tockett uh, leaving the Coyotes, mutually parting ways with the Coyotes. I feel like the leadership group needs to be on the hot seat. And that's exactly what happened. Ekman Larson and the Coyotes are discussing ways uh, to part ways as well. He's got a no movement clause like Ekman Larson does. So whatever happens, it's up to OEL to make that decision and give the Cowboys a green light. The Cowboys cannot make a trade without Ekman Larson's uh, okay. So that's where we're at. Um, You know, when the contract was signed, obviously it was a bit too high, but at that time, everyone was expecting the cap to increase by so much. You know, oh, Vegas just got in the league. The cap's gonna increase so much. Seattle's coming soon. You know, the cap's going to be $85 million, $90 million. It won't look too bad. Same thing could be said with the Clayton Keller contract. But in this real, real life scenario post-COVID, this contract doesn't work no matter how, how, what stats you gather, no matter how pretty you paint the picture, this contract does not work. For a return on Ekman Larson, I'm really not expecting much. I'm expecting an anchor player to come back. Maybe like a Louis Erickson, a James Neal, Milan Lucic type contract where it's going to end sooner than Ekman Larson, but it's still an anchor of a contract they have to take back. You know, a struggling NHL player that, you know, the Coyotes just need to take on their books to benefit the other team that's receiving Ekman Larson. And like a third round pick if you're going into this trade expecting a second or a first or like a star winger who scores uh maybe come back down to earth a little bit it, it might even cost the coyotes to give away Ekman larson you know we saw patrick marlowe where the leafs had to give a first round pick to carolina to take patrick marlowe's contract so, you know, maybe something like that might happen. Obviously, the Kyers are, are not going to give away any more draft picks. And so that's where we're at. Just wanted, I never really made an OEL career video. And so here it is. Um, you know, with all the news surrounding Ekman Larson this weekend, if anyone, you know, what's OEL up to? Well, he's up to no good, I would say. So. You know, it's time to part ways. I hope they could find a deal that works best for both camps. I hope the Coyotes don't have to pay anything to give them away. Uh, You know, even if they just receive like a fourth rounder and a heavy cap hit for one or two years, I'm okay with that. Whatever salary they can move out to go fetch a good free agent who could put the puck in the net, I'm all for that. Um, Just losing uh, some cap some cap hits would be good. We're already losing Auntie Ranta, Nick Jalmerson, Jason Demers. Um, I'm sure there's more. I haven't really looked at cap friendly in a, in a, in a quick minute, but uh, there's a lot of salary moving out for the counties this season where they can make some good roster changes and kind of sculpt this team into a, into a path where they can score goals, they can be offensive, they can play a high tempo game and push for a playoff spot. That's what I'm hoping. And, you know, a move like this, that that frees up a lot of money, a lot of flexibility for Bill Armstrong. And uh, maybe maybe it's good for the franchise, but we'll just have to wait and see. So that's it for me. As always, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, spread the word. And thank you for your support.